Filipinos are so vain. Like if I had two shades lighter skin tone, then I could be considered a foreigner. But because I have Moreno skin, which I am fully proud of being full Filipino, it's like, what are you? You're, you know, I kind of got, I kind of got shamed for that in the beginning. Right. When I was first yeah. here. I'm so happy. And I'm very fortunate to be able to say that. I don't, I've never felt unwelcome here once or ever. Always just been welcomed with open arms. I see my lolos and lolas, my titas and my titos, who I haven't seen in years. So it's always great to see them. You know, family that I never knew existed, you know. But I've never once felt un unwelcome. I noticed this has not been talked about a lot. And before I tell you what the topic is, let me paint you a picture. Imagine you're a full Filipino. You were born and raised in a different country, like let's say America, UK, Japan, Korea, wherever it may be. And you grow up very much accustomed to the culture you were surrounded by. And you realize that deep down I am a Filipino. And when you come back to the Philippines, you realize, oh my gosh, I can't fit in with the Filipino crowd. And I am not a Filipino because of the culture I was raised up in. And this is what we call the second generation kid. And I've noticed along with it, like myself included and the friends I have, something that's not being talked about a lot because in face value, you could consider them to be foreign or Filipino. But I want to tell you a personal story, guys, because, you know, this is my channel. I want to be vulnerable with you guys as much as possible. But I am a Filipino Japanese that grew up here in the Philippines. In fact, I was born and raised here. And the harsh reality that I have to bring to you guys is I have a hard time fitting in with the Filipino people. And yes, you could argue I grew up in a Filipino country in a Filipino school, but I have to let you guys know I grew up in a very Japanese household. My dad was Japanese. Everything was Japanese from the food we ate, the mannerisms, the culture, the way we address our elders, the way we bow, the way we say itadakimasu and all those nuances. Everything was basically Japanese, but my first language was English. And I went to the school here in the Philippines called Coleo de San Agustin Makati from my grade school years up until my senior high school years. And yes, you could say you were raised in a Filipino school, you were raised in a Filipino country, didn't you at least pick up the mannerisms and whatnot? I have to let you guys know, CSA Yes, it's a Filipino school, but there were a lot of foreign people. And my close friend group that I am still very much friends with that came to me with CSA, I've grown up with a lot of foreign people in my younger years, and I have grown accustomed to what they were because I was surrounded by them every single day, even on the weekends, because I had very much an absent family. I picked up most of what the other nationalities and their nuances were like into my own. So I picked up a lot of stuff from the American people, the Englishmen the Indians, the Koreans, the Aussie people that I was surrounded with. And it left me in a place where I've become very much like them and not one with a Filipino because again, we were all just half Filipinos or full foreign, pe foreign people living in the Philippines and we had that common ground together. Harsh reality I have to say is I have a hard time fitting in with Filipino people simply because I don't speak the language is good enough, who I don't act like them, my mannerisms and my culture is very much foreign to them. And the painful part as well is when I would go to the Japanese people, I am too Western for them. As I would say, I am very much a foreigner in their eyes and it leaves me in a spot where I'm unable to identify whether or not I am fully Japanese or fully Filipino. You know, and also, in case you're wondering, oh, oh, magtatagalog din ako. And the issue here is that it's not a matter of identification, but it's a matter of bridging that cultural diaspora, bridging the gap between the two cultures you were accustomed to, and finding which one really suits you. You know, in this video, I aim to uncover that. And today, I'm going to be interviewing two of my good friends who are full Filipino that grew up abroad. One grew up in Chicago, in the US, and the other grew up in the UK. And both of them came to the Philippines trying to bridge that cultural diaspora, find out the answers as to why it's very difficult to find this one singular cultural identity. And with that being said, we also talk about their challenges and what they had to go through in terms of adjusting to their new life coming from a foreign background, even though they are full Filipino. And towards the end, I'm going to give you my take on how I've done my part into adjusting and addressing this. And with that being said, this video is going to be a long format video, a sit down interview where we can get every one of our guests and even myself into their very most vulnerable form where we could just be completely honest about our experiences. And keep in note, we go into very controversial topics here as well about prejudices against foreigners and whatnot so stick around and don't cancel us but with that being said here's the first interview with our guest speaker evan so my name is evan laresca also known as the savvy expat on youtube and i was born and raised in chicago for the first 15 years of my life i had traditionally what most people would consider the classic american dream the white 
picket fence home, traditional schooling, right. extracurricular activities, suburban life, suburban life, exactly, 20 minutes outside of downtown Chicago. So by all standards, the whole upbringing was American, but as far as identity, it was a split between American right. and Filipino. Yeah. Yeah. But both your parents are full Filipino though, right? Both full Filipino. Yeah. But the thing is, it's, it's interesting because Unlike most traditional second generation families, in a sense, I might be slipping into the third generation American type of family. Right. Because my, here's the thing, my, my father, he was born here in the Philippines, born in Manila, but then moved to the US, Cicero, Chicago, at the age of one. His entire upbringing was fully in the US. Right. And then my mother was born and raised in Michigan. Yeah, so everything is just full American from then on out. Yeah, except for that one year of my dad's life. Yeah. <laughs> so would you say all traces of being Filipino have, have been lost? I wouldn't say all traces because I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up as well. And so mm -hmm. their whole life, they were born and raised in the Philippines. And so they were able to rub off a little bit of Filipino culture into us. I mean, just things like watching Wawa Wee right, yeah. with my grandfather, listening to OPM. Right. Uh, but other than that, like most Filipino culture was not ingrained or right. integrated. In my yeah. early stages. So Evan, would you say back at home in the US, were you raised in an American household or a Filipino household? 100% I'd say an American household. Well, 99% because right. we're, we're still Filipino. Still ate Filipino food, but that's just as far as the extent yeah. of Filipino culture we had growing up. Majority American just because I could say for our family personally, the thought of even moving to the Philippines never even crossed our mind. Right. And like some Filipino Americans or Balak Bayans will say, yeah, I'm going to go back to the Philippines. But even that phrase, going back to the Philippines, is not even... Not, was not even for our family because right. we wouldn't be going back. We were raised and born and raised mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. Very little Filipino culture was exposed to me growing up. I did do tinickling, the bamboo sticks, ah, the yeah, dancing. Yeah, where so. you got to dance in between yeah. them, right? And I did yeah. it around like different parts of Chicago too. Yeah. But like other than that, didn't know any Filipino culture. Absolutely zero, right? Absolutely zero yeah. other than food, dancing. But that's like the best yeah. part about Filipino culture, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, we just grew up in an American household, puro English. We didn't speak any Tagalog. We would attend Filipino parties here and there but even our cousins and whatnot they're basically whitewashed they're right? basically whitewashed yeah. we're all coconuts brown on the outside white on the inside <laughs> that's a that's a really creative way to put two and two together Pretty but much. what's it like growing up as a filipino in chicago i wouldn't even it didn't cross my mind that i was like filipino but i was growing up in the u.s you know what i mean because if a filipino were to move to chicago in the latter years of his or her life it would feel like they're out of place right. but for me it's it's, it, it's like you don't know what you don't know so i didn't well, i wasn't exposed to filipino culture so i didn't have to think about me being filipino being in the u.s mm -hmm. it was like a, it was like my eyes were blind i didn't know i was filipino right uh, obviously i knew i was filipino by blood but i didn't think about that so being raised in chicago it's just a melting pot of cultures nobody really thinks all right, this is my background, that's my background. Yeah. Other than gathering for this kind of cuisine of food, we're all just Americans, right? you know? And that's a, I think that's a really beautiful part about the U.S. Yeah. Other than like certain areas having discrimination and whatnot, at least in Chicago, we all are just Americans. I think on the news, and this is where it kind of gets a little controversial, but on the news, I think racism is kind of exaggerated, right? to be quite honest, yeah. because when you actually live in these places, nobody is slandering or based off of where you're from. Right, right? yeah. The people that do that are not cases, yeah. but if you're around decent individuals, nobody does right. that. It's very diverse, so people right. are not going to mind. Now I want to ask you, do you have any personal horror stories of you being treated badly because of your race? Absolutely zero. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I think I had a very, I'm very privileged to have the upbringing I have, and have had in the U.S. Even when we went to certain like ski towns and ski resorts where the population there was 100% American, Caucasian, nobody treated us ever bad. Right. You know, that's the thing I can't stress enough. Like when we were growing up in the U.S., at least in the time that I was in, maybe 2024 might be different and people have more prejudice in their heart. But in the time that I was growing up in, we all just saw each other as Americans, right. as yeah. individuals. So now we're going to skip time frames. Do you live here now in the Philippines? I do. I live in BGC. So what changed? Why did you or your, your whole family lives with you, right? Yeah, so just to give a little bit more background because I didn't get to get to this part yet. So I told us that we're, we were raised in Chicago and we moved to the Philippines four years ago. So I moved here when I was 16. Right. And we moved to BGC, came here with my family, and I'm still with my family. Yeah. So what changed? I mean, hearing from your story, it's like you guys had the American dream, you know, suburban life, no discrimination against you. Why, why did you leave the U.S. for the Philippines? Well, number one, it's the cost of living. 
cost of living in Chicago is very high. Mm. So cost of living is one thing. Second thing is my mom hates and um, we are starting to get tired of it as well. We see it's a windy city, so we wanted to move somewhere more tropical like the Philippines. And third, it's only righteous to get in touch with our culture. Right. And uh, we had li very little knowledge of our identity and culture yeah. back then. So now, yeah. now we're back here. Now that's the topic I want to touch on. And now that you've mentioned that, when you came back to the Philippines, at least for your experience, do you ever feel like you weren't Filipino and you didn't belong here? Great question. Initially, I didn't feel like I was Filipino. I knew I was Filipino, but I didn't feel like I was Filipino. So there's very two different things. When I was growing up in Chicago, I never really thought about Filipino culture at all. So I kind of brought that here to the Philippines, which I feel like was kind of the downfall of my mindset. So for the first two years of my life in the Philippines, I really didn't enjoy it. I didn't fit in with the crowd. I didn't understand the jokes here. I didn't speak any Tagalog. That's my fault, you know. I could have right. at least did more research before coming out here and learned the language and immersed myself with any of the Filipino individuals I knew back in the state. But when I came here, didn't feel like I was Filipino at all. Right. So how did you bridge that gap between you being an American, coming back to your homeland, and for you to find your cultural identity? What was the process like? It was a long process, I'll tell you, yeah. yeah. It was a very long, drawn out, uncomfortable process because it took breaking down like culture, the culture I grew up with. It took me kind of setting that aside to learn more about my yeah. root, right? And so it meant me kind of leaving a life I had my entire, it meant leaving my past life for a new life and a lot of readjustments. One of the things I did, and that's how I met you, was finding a group of Filipino and, well, you're half Japanese, but yeah. they have Filipino friends and actually getting to understand the jokes, the humor, the way that people socialize, the di social dynamics, so many variables involved into transitioning into a new culture that most people don't see. It's kind of tough because when a local Filipino who was born and raised here looks at me, they just have that expectation. You should know the jokes that I'm saying. You should understand the language I'm speaking. Basically held to a Filipino standard that's been born right, and raised right. here. But it's hard for me to do that because I was you know, born and raised in the US. That meant I had to force myself to adjust to Filipino culture. And that's fine, I'm Filipino. So yeah. I feel like that's my obligation. Yeah. So Evan, you know, coming to the Philippines, I've noticed that the way you look really does matter in terms of at least being a local or a Filipino. Depending on how people view me, some think I'm Japanese, Korean, Chinese. <laughs> But the general consensus is, I'm a foreigner. And to you, you look very much like a true, full-blooded Filipino, which you are. Did people ever mistake you as a foreigner? Some people did. But like, th there's two kinds of Filipino locals, I feel like. One will hear my accent, and they'll be very thrown off by it. And when right. they hear the accent and know where I'm from, then they can kind of give me uh, leeway. And they'll be like, all right, he's not born and raised here, so he's kind of he's right. a foreigner. But then there's other Filipino where like, it's very incomprehensible that I can be full blooded Filipino but born and raised in the US which is completely out of my control right. that just happened that was the life I was born into it was a little bit frustrating for me in the beginning because I thought about it and I'm like Filipinos are so vain like if I had two shades lighter skin tone then I could be considered a foreigner but because I have Moreno skin which I am fully proud of being full Filipino it's like what are you you're you know I kind of got I kind of got shamed for that in the beginning right when I was first yeah. year which is fine because I should have learned the language I should have known it but I mean you don't have to learn Tagalog when you Right. Nice, so. And why do you think? I'm sorry if it came off a little harsh there. No. I, but in the yeah. in, in like my first few years of life here, it was frustrating. You yeah. know, it's like I was getting mocked. I was getting people that were giving me dirty looks for speaking English. Again, I understand it. I understand yeah. because I, I'm, we're in the Philippines. I should speak Filipino. But mm -hmm. I appreciate you being vulnerable and telling the harsh reality. You know, because yes. that's also what I aim to uncover here. Even though it might get some negative comments, but that's the truth. Yeah. We people have to go through. You know. Yeah. And it's not a smooth sailing journey. But with that being said. I think over the course of your four years stay in the Philippines, what do you think has changed that made you identify yourself? Yes, this is it. I'm a Filipino. Once I finally yeah. actually fully immersed myself in Filipino culture, from the food, integrating myself in the language, the people, and accepting that hey, this is my root, even if it feels like my roots were fully being back in the US, mm -hmm. my identity is Filipino. And I actually found the Philippines to be my true home. First two years of my life when I was here, I was like, I want to, I, I feel like my home is still back in the US, back in the US. But home is where your heart is and Philippines captivated my heart and uh, I just I feel like I belong here I guess what's probably one of the most difficult parts of you adjusting to transitioning back to being a Filipino I think it was the people yeah that was the most difficult part and I love everything about the Philippines but what made it hard for me only Filipino Americans and Filipino foreign Filipinos from abroad will understand and un and get what I'm saying is it made it hard because it's kind of the people in the beginning kind of 
I, I, I felt shamed, you know? I felt shamed in the beginning for being raised, born and raised in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, I think because people saw like, oh, he spoke Filipino, he looks Filipino, but he's speaking English. You're just mayabang, you're just cocky. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know any better. I hate to say it, but there was kind of a closed mindset towards like people, the fact that people can actually come from abroad and be Filipino. Right, yeah. Like that actually exists. Yeah. And I, and I don't say that to, I don't say that in a rude way, but that's the reality. There are Filipinos that are born and raised abroad yeah. and come here with very little Filipino experience mm -hmm. and understanding. Yeah. Very few individuals understood that. All of that 100% completely falls upon my shoulders and I take full responsibility. That's why I took the initiative and effort to actually fully find my roots and identity for what it really is, mm -hmm. which is being Filipino. Yeah. I mean, looking back now, two questions I want to ask. First, would you say it was worth it to reconnect with the Filipino culture after going through what you went through? Absolutely. Absolutely, zero regrets. I, I love being Filipino. I'm proud to be Filipino. Yeah, I mean, I don't consider the U.S. my home anymore. So yeah. it says a lot for me to be raised there my entire life. 100% of my being and knowledge wrapped around the U.S. my first 16 years. And then me, I would never even think I'd be here standing today or sitting here today thinking right. like, oh, the U.S. is not my home anymore. Yeah. Philippines is my home. To wrap up sooner this video, would you consider yourself to be more Filipino or more American now? Filipino. Yeah, I consider myself, myself to be more Filipino. I'll always have that, you know, coconut elf of me, <laughs> yeah. white on the inside, brown on the outside. But like I keep on saying, Philippines is my home. And uh, if I were to go back to the U.S., not that I wouldn't, not that I would feel out of place there or that I don't belong there, but it would just be, it would just feel different. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't feel like home. Yeah. Now, with that being said, do you plan to live in the Philippines for the rest of your life now? I do. It's very hard to say because you never know where life takes you, but at least for me right yeah. now, I think I'll always be in the Philippines. Yeah. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's a beautiful homecoming feeling, you know? It is. Yeah, yeah it really is. A, a lot deeper appreciation for my culture now. Yeah. With that being said, Evan, we're going to wrap up now with quick fire questions. Let's do it. Philippines or US? Philippines. American food or Filipino food? American food. City life or island life? City life. Filipino women or American women? Filipino women. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Much better. Cold or hot? Weather. Uh, okay. Adobo or Sinigang? Sinigang. Damn. Okay. He's Na very boy. Naba boy. American people or Filipino people? Filipino people. He's American okay. Filipino people. American <laughs> Filipino people. Okay. With that being said, Evan, I'm not going to let this interview end without you speaking Filipino. Mabuhay, Philippines. Yeah, we're yeah. speaking English, and then you're telling me, all right, do you love your country? Uh, like, do you consider Philippines your home? Yeah. I'm like, I'm Filipino proud, all this, all that. Then you go to Tagalog. <laughs> That's where you get me. Gusto ko sabihin, Pilipinas ay unang unang country. Yeah. Bansa. Best country. With that being said, thank you so much, Evan. Thank you, yeah. It's a pleasure. So, my name's Matt. I'm a full Filipino until the age of seven. Well, I'm full Filipino the whole time, but I lived in Philippines, was born and raised in uh, Cavite uh, up until I was age seven. And then my mom and my dad moved to UK for better work and then they brought me with them and then that's where I was raised I went to school there lived there for majority of my life over over a decade now and then only recently until last year so it's actually coming up to one year I've been away from the UK but it was only last year that I left and uh, here we are I'm pretty much curious to find out since we're talking about being a second generation kid how did it feel to grow up in the UK as a Filipino. I wouldn't say it's that tough. I know people have different stories. I've heard all kinds of all kinds of things, good and bad, but for me it wasn't that bad. I'd go with the good thing and the bad thing. The good the good thing was I learned how to how to adjust to different culture and it helped me with my uh, social skills because not only was I full Filipino moving to the UK, a different country, I moved schools a lot, like a lot. Four or five must have been right. like four or five times. They're always moving around different locations, different different cities, different places to live for many different reasons, right? But you can see it as a good and a bad thing. The bad thing obviously is you're not sticking to one friend group. You have to constantly remake new friends. Right. And I, at that time too, I was super shy, super introverted, new jeans reference. I was super shy and uh, I was just super like reserved that I was very, right. very, I was like known as a quiet kid. So me having to make new friends, obviously it's easier when you're younger because all you have to do is ask, hey, do you want to play with us? Definitely. Yep. Cool. As you get older, you kind of have to be more, you know, have more social calibration around it. So it's not as easy, but I wouldn't trade the world for it. I had to adjust. There were times when it was really hard to adjust, you know, and obviously it came with some 
I, I wouldn't mean, say bullying, but... I want to talk about that bullying part later on, but growing yeah. up, did you have more English friends or Filipino friends or foreign friends? I had more English friends, for sure. But here's the thing, like us Filipinos, what we do is we stick together, regardless if it's UK, US. Like, we know our community like where and where we are, so I have family, I have Filipino family friends. We used to always go to each other's houses. They'd come to our house, they'd have parties, we'd have celebrations and gatherings. And we'd keep in touch, but outside of that, it was mostly just like English friends or people from Right. Okay, so. yeah. Now I want to talk on the topic of bullying since you mentioned it earlier. Or were you bullied as a Filipino growing up in the UK? Because when, here's the thing, like the, the, the kids that used to, you know, I'd say poke fun. Some might say it's bullying. I, I don't know, I'm over it now. But back then it was... You know, it, it really got to me. It really got to me because here's the thing with with UK is there's a big. It's called banter, like taking the banter, piss. Right? Yeah, banter, banter, taking the piss, just poking fun at each other. But sometimes it gets out of hand. But if you were to, if you ever say like, if you were to show that you were offended by it or call them out on it, they'll just they'll just mask it as banter like oh we're just taking the piss bro relax right. it's not a big deal so it's kind of i don't know gathering if the word is if that's the word but right uh, yeah i've got taken the piss out of you, know, you tell us some instances when you got taken the piss out of oh well there's too many bro tell too us many. some horror stories man too many man. there's a lot of instances like they call me chinky or mm -hmm. call me just, just think i'm chinese ching chong right. chow or tell yeah. me to stop eating dog back then being insecure being the quiet kid being you know not very popular in school that really got to me you know, right. and that's, that's what actually what motivated me and it put a fire under my ass to start like improving, working on myself. Right. So I wouldn't be in that position any longer or like kind of come better than these people who are bullying me or yeah. taking the piss out of me, you yeah. know. But I'm over it now, so it's all good. I don't yeah. care. You know what I find interesting is that in case you viewers are wondering who I'm going to bring up, his name is Mike Makapinlak. You, you should watch this video down in the description. Like like Matt himself, you know, the common de denominator between the two of you, both of you are full Filipino that grew up abroad. And all of you just really had to work around the fact that you guys were not in your home, that you guys were getting picked on, and you always, obviously had to do something about it, right? Yeah, picked on. So, so I guess, what's probably the difficult part about adjusting and realizing, crap, I, I should stop getting picked on? People who I thought were so-called friends ended up being very, very two-faced and not right. being who they said they were. Um, I want to go back into the whole being a Filipino abroad then. If you want to find out more about Matt, we've made an interview with him. It's very extensive. We really go into every single detail on his life. So if you want to know his story, click again the link in the description. With that being said, Matt, were you raised in a Filipino household growing up in the UK? Or the fir for the first, let's say for the first... I want to say three, four years yeah. I was there. So the first one to two years was, or actually it was like one year. So it wasn't even that long. It was, it was my mom and my, my, biological, my biological dad. So I came in 2010. 2011 was when my biological dad passed away. And then Sorry it was just that, all yeah. good, all good. Me and my mom for a while. And then after that, as I said, we had family friends who were Filipino, also living in UK, pretty close to them. And we actually yeah. became housemates. Like they let us move in with them. They had like a spare room and we were living there for like, couple of years so that's still filipino household right and then around 2015 was when my mom met my stepdad who's british full and then british. yeah full british yeah. full british yeah full british and also met my stepbrother so that's when she met him and, and my stepbrother that's when i got introduced to them as well and then 2015 was when we moved into a house together right and then from 2015 onwards that's that's what it's been like it's just been uh a British household. British household, pretty yeah. much. British Filipino household, yeah. kind of. Being in the UK for just for an X amount of time, would you say you picked up more English or British values and culture sets? Yeah, I'd say so. And I guess, what's the difference between a Filipino household and a British household? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, a couple differences, I'd say, with Filipino household, they're more traditional. Yeah. You know, whatever the parents want is what you, they, they expect you yeah, to. It's a non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable. Right? Yeah. If you want to be a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, or a lawyer, a basketball player, that's pretty much what you have to do unless you want to, you know, upset your parents. Maybe in the short term, at least. But it's very traditional in the Filipino household. It's very family oriented. It's what I love. Like every yeah. time there's a Filipino party going on or a, or a gathering or you see your other lolos and lolas and titos and yeah. titas, your cousin, that fifth cousin you never knew existed. <laughs> that there's always one white guy too. There's always, and some white guy yeah. who's married to a Filipina. Jokes aside, like, it's super welcoming, super family-oriented, traditional. Yeah. 
And that's a good and a bad thing, of course. Because yeah. if you're traditional, at least you uphold certain values, which is right. what I respect a lot. Yeah. But with the British household, I'd say it's more, you have a bit more freedom as to what you want to do. Right. There's not as much of that expectation. Again, there's, there's exceptions on either end, of course, but I'm just speaking in generalities. And you know, I've grown up there for over a decade, so I can speak on this, right? You're more free to, to do what you want to do, even what you're passionate about, even if it's like a degree or a course or a job that maybe doesn't pay well, but say like, oh, okay, as long as you enjoy right. your work, then you go yeah. do it. Another thing as well, again, it could be different, but from what I've seen in English households, it's not as like family oriented. And let me explain. It's like everyone's kind of, it's not to say that families aren't close and they mm -hmm. don't love each other. It's more so like everyone is doing their own thing. Right. Like the, the, the daughter might be somewhere up north studying, right? Or, or living in her own place. Yeah. The brother could just be, you know, minding his own business playing in his room, football or playing something. football, yeah. video games. And then it's just the mom and, the mom and the dad in the household. And mom's maybe like, I don't know, on a, a girl's night out or a girl's date or cooking dinner. And then the dad will just be off in, at the pub watching football. I'd say, I'd say those are the main, main differences yeah. that I've noticed at least. Yeah. But it's hard, it's like comparing apples and oranges. Yeah. It's very hard to compare the two. Being in that whole British setup as a Filipino, would you consider yourself to be more British English or Filipino? A good question. Um, I'd say Filipino, Filipino at heart. Yeah. Regardless of the fact that I've lived in the UK longer than I've lived here in Philippines, I'd still say my heart is, and I, I'm, I'm Filipino yeah. at heart. I've taken on a lot of British influence, as you can tell by the accent, the what, what I'm wearing. Central Sea. Central Sea, <laughs> represent the Mandem. And I have a lot of British friends and people I can, you know, people I love over there. I always like to think I'm Filipino at heart. At heart, like that's where I go home to. Yeah. Now that you're back in the Philippines after leaving UK at 19, how does it feel to come back to the Philippines as a balikbayan or a kababayan? It wasn't that hard to be honest. Uh, everyone welcomed me with open arms, which I'm very grateful to have happened. Because I've heard stories too. I've heard other stories yeah. when it wasn't really the case. Or when you come back as a balikbayan yeah. and the people treat you differently. You know, I, I do believe in the Philippines. You're judged a lot by your looks, right? So if you look foreign enough, they're immediately going to pounce on you. I've had some of that before. Are you full Filipino, man? Yes, I'm full. Filipino, yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. Because he looks very chinito, right, guys? That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying to you, bro. Like, I need to. I might have to do a DNA test. Yeah. To verify. To verify, right? Uh, yeah. But you're probably right. I probably have chinito genes in me. Yeah. But full Filipino, so. Do you ever feel unwelcomed here in the Philippines? No, never, never. And again, I'm, I'm so happy. And I'm very fortunate to be able to say that. I don't. I've never felt unwelcome here once or ever. Always just been welcomed with open arms. I see my lolos and lolas, my titas and my titos who I haven't seen in years. So it's always great to see them, you know, family that I never knew existed, you know, but I've never once felt un unwelcome. Do people still mistake you as a foreigner here in the Philippines? Yes. What do they think? They think from? I'm Konyo, they think I'm Chinito, they think I'm... Korean. Uh, Korean. Sing I know Singaporean's one of them. Singaporean. Thai, I've gotten that sometimes. Chinese, I've gotten yeah. that. Yeah. Anything but Philippines. That's so funny. Yeah, that's the, that's the it's anything yeah. but Philippines. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. It's, I'll show my passport and everything. Boy. But you also have an English passport, right? I do have an English passport. Perfect. So that means you can go anywhere now. So we're going to wrap up now with a few quick fire questions. Philippines or England? Philippines. Adobo or crumpets? Adobo. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of question? Beef tapa or English breakfast? English breakfast. Cold weather, hot weather? Hot. Tea or coffee? Coffee. English women or Filipino women? Filipino women. You know why. I mean, I know why. They don't know why. Come find out why. Come find out why. That's very devious of him. Final question, Keith. Come to Philippines. Everything's better in the Philippines. The bar was the same. Fun it's more fun in the Philippines. That island life or city life? Uh, city, city, city. Okay. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. That was hard. There's a time and a place for island. There's a time and a place for city. Yeah. Marunong ba mag Tagalog? Apo. Marunong ako mag Tagalog, pero konti lang. And yes, like I've said guys, at the end, I would give you my personal take on what I've done to bridge this cultural diaspora and to keep this very transparent with you guys out there, to keep it a buck because I'm no liar here. I've not done so much in terms of my part in, in bridging this cultural diaspora. I have tend to stick around the foreign people. Most of them are Westerners or East Asian. Stick with them because it's what's comfortable to me and they get what I've gone through in terms of growing up. But at the same time, it's very difficult for me to adjust since even now, I'm still surrounded by a lot of foreigners. I don't live with my family, and I'm surrounded by Spanish people, Latin people, where I'm picking up more of their culture. So again, one, my life is a melting pot of different cultures, and it's hard for me to narrow down singularly which culture I want to identify as. But yes, in my part, I am a Filipino, I am a Japanese, and I have to do everything I can to understand that culture. And being born here in the Philippines, it's not been easy. You know, I mean, depending on my angles and the lighting, I look, I look like a foreign guy, 
but at the same time I also look Filipino and having that preconceived notion that oh this guy's probably Mayaban because he's a foreigner kind of leaves me in a spot where I don't want to explore anymore I still consider myself to be Filipino my brother tells me Pinoy ka you have to be happy about that and I'm happy about that and I would t always tell people and brag I am a Filipino and I love it but right now I think my duty as a Japanese man is to bridge that gap between me being a Filipino and a Japanese though I've mentioned I grew up in a Japanese household I lost my father when I was 17 and I basically had no relationship with him at all and I plan to learn that part of my culture and understand what it's like to be a Japanese but with that being said I hope this puts some light into what being a second or third generation kid is and I hope you viewers out there can also be much more kind to those people that look Filipino but grew up abroad because again everyone's got their own unique story. With that being said, follow my socials down below and I hope you enjoy this video. Until next time.